plate. Yeah, Hudson will be pitching and swinging the bat in this ball game. So we'll get to see a lot of him here this afternoon. First pitch, that one runs in on Merrick Houston. And that's a good sign just seeing him in the lineup for Wake Forest. He's a guy that's missed the last four ball games. Both he and Nick Kurtz both back in the lineup after a short absence. And you take a look at the rest of their lineup there. It's been a team that, in talking with Tom Walter, their head coach, he says, we feel like we're finally starting to have more consistent at bats up and down the lineup. And certainly having Houston Kurtz back in there will help with that. 2-1 the count to Houston. A sophomore takes strike two on the outer edge. Houston, a guy that was great in the field a season ago out at shortstop. Struggled with the bat a bit. This season swinging it much better when he's been out there. It's a flare out in the left field. Nobody going to get that one as it falls in front of Horton. And Wake Forest has their leadoff man on. Sometimes you feel like you make a pretty good pitch. And you look over and the guy's still standing on first base. Exactly. And you can't get down on that, too. You know, you attack the strike zone. Luck of the draw that it, it hit the handle of the bat. And those balls just don't travel as far. And they, they find out. They find their grass every now and then. So Houston is on. That will bring up Adam Tellier. We mentioned him just a moment ago. The transfer from Ball State. Wake Forest has found a, a few key pieces in the transfer portal this season. He being one of them. 372 batting average. It comes in riding a nine game hitting streak and has a favorable 2 0 count here. Tell you a season ago for Ball State, second team All MAC performer. Fouls that one off. He hit nine home runs in 59 games a season ago. Already nine home runs this season for Wake Forest. Here comes a 2-1 from Hudson. Shows bunt, gets it. Second. Forest has a runner in scoring position with one away. Taking a look at that Liberty defense. The one difference you may notice is Braden Horton in left field. Noah Rabin going to be out for a little bit with a hand injury that he suffered a week ago. So Horton will man left field. Other than that, pretty standard lineup from what we've seen from Scott Jackson and company this season. As Nick Kurtz digs in on the left-hand side for Wake. There's a look at Scott Jackson in his eighth season at the helm of this Flames program. Kurtz takes that one down in the dirt, and Todd Hudson having some trouble getting ahead of these Wake Forest hitters here early. Exactly, and that's going to be, you know, key number one for Hudson. If we look at the lineup for, for Wake Forest, six of the seven hitters there are, are batting above 300, so if they get an advantage count of 2-0, they're going to be looking for something that they can drive and, and make it hurt. 3-0 and now to Kurtz, and that's one thing with this Wake Forest team as well. They're going to make you throw strikes. This is a patient bunch. They're not going to chase a lot of pitches outside of the strike zone. That one catches the corner. And so you're going to have to go right after them. A season ago, Wake Forest, the best team in the country in terms of drawing walks. This season, they rank 10th. That one hit a mile straight up. McCadden died trying to find it. And unable to make the play. Everybody trying to strain to see that one. Our, from our vantage point, we really can't see back behind the plate at all. And see on TV, that ball, look, oh, it's a pop fly. Right. You know, everyone can catch it. That ball has so much spin coming towards the field. It, you have to almost play that ball five feet back of where you think it's going to be right underneath you. So that moves the count full. 3-2 pitch now on the way from Hudson. That ball is mashed, but Kurt's well out in front of it. And that one may land over on the Liberty football practice field. But nonetheless, if you're Todd Hudson, it's a long strike. <laughs> That's what you tell yourself. That's what you tell yourself as a pitcher, don't you? You try to forget how far it went. Exactly. And you say, ah, yeah, just, just foul ball. 
Here comes the payoff pitch again. Again, out in front of it. Again, well struck. Goodness, that about killed a pedestrian. Oh, my word. <laughs> Nick Kurtz, he's sending souvenirs all over Liberty's campus right now as the count remains full. Well, where does Hudson go here? Goes to the fastball and misses downstairs. So Kurtz draws the one out walk and Wake Forest has a couple runners on here in the first. And a great at bat by Kurtz. And not only did he reach base successfully, you know, he got Hudson throwing multiple pitches. There was probably seven pitches thrown in that at bat. You know, you get to report back to your guys and say what it looks like. Is the fastball tailing? Is the off speed good? It's a great at bat. It's a quality at bat. So now a couple runners on for Seaver King. What a story he's been this season for Wake Forest. A transfer from Division II Wingate where he was a, a third team, or no, I take that back. He was an All-American a season ago. He's a guy that had a 47-game hitting streak that kind of spanned over the last two seasons. And he moves up, Division I, ACC ball, and he has been darn good for Wake Forest as well, hitting over 300 here on the year for them. But finds himself down in the count here 0-2. Stays alive as he fouls off that breaking ball. Hey, you're shaking, but like, it's Hudson's good. arsenal, he throws a four-seam fastball, a two-seamer, throw a change-up, and has a little bit of a cutter he'll throw in there from time to time as well. Usually in the 88 to 91 mile an hour range with that fastball. For a long wait, pick off to second. Gets away, not far enough for the runners to advance. As Hudson trying to see if he could catch Houston napping out there at second base. We've actually seen a lot of that from the Flames this year, picking to second base. Go back to the first series they had, they picked off a runner. Other than that, haven't had a whole lot of success with it. Strikeout. That one gets in on the hands, could be two. Bouncer, the second for one, the first in time. Marsh does it himself. The double play. And let the bullpen take it from there. Here's a look at the Liberty lineup. King Kepley leading things off. The freshman Tanner Marsh in the two hole. Another freshman batting cleanup in McCadden Die. And Cam Foster, you see him continuing to work his way back up in the lineup. He's been swinging it well here of late after batting in the nine hole in last weekend series, or two weekends ago, I should say. But it's a Liberty lineup that had a roller coaster ride, you might say, this past weekend. At Middle Tennessee, Liberty no hit on Saturday. They come back, score 11 runs in the first inning on Sunday on their way to 25 runs overall and a program record eight home runs. It's a lot of hitting. So who, who are the real Flames? <laughs> Who's the real Flames offense? That's what everybody wants to know. Ken Kepley stands in right now, takes that one just off the inner edge. He was the count of one and one. Kepley. Two home runs on Sunday, three home runs in the series. He was six for 13 against the Blue Raiders. Looks at that breaking ball, dropping in for a strike. Hey, you see what he's done in his last six ball games. Flames leadoff man that did a great job in the second half of last season, really established himself in that role, and we've seen more pop out of him so far this year as well. Exactly. And on top of being a great leadoff hitter, you're exactly right. Those two home runs, that, that power's in there. He had just one home run a season ago, already five this year. Also, shows a great batting eye as he leads the team with 20 walks this season. And has worked the count full here. Schnosky, the right-hander, gets the sign. Here it comes. And misses down and in. So the Flames, Kane Kepley works the leadoff walk. And that's, you know, position A for Liberty here. They're, they're looking to get people on and kind of put the pressure on. They, they have a methodical way of playing baseball, and especially early and often in the first couple innings, that they're going to be a little more aggressive on the base paths and get guys in scoring position quicker. Well, Kepley on the year, eight for eight in stolen base opportunities. So he's not afraid to get out there and run a little bit. As the freshman Tanner Marsh stands in. Marsh looks at a breaking ball in there for a strike. Marsh, the freshman out of Asheboro, North Carolina, claimed that starting shortstop role in the fall and 
Really, they began the year with him down at the bottom part of the lineup. He has swung the bat better than most expected. And that one booted at third base. King coming in, and it just clanks off the heel of his mitt and rolls into foul territory. So the Flames get a bit of a gift there. I think his only play would have been two first. But as it is, they get nothing, and the Flames have two on, nobody out. And kudos to, to the Flames running a, a hard 90 there. It was almost one of those plays where you tried to react before you got the ball in the glove, and you're probably right. That play only was going to get somebody out at first, and, and maybe that was a little mistake. Well, it's a mistake the Flames hope they can capitalize on now as they get Aiden Sweat to the plate. Preseason All-Conference USA. The transfer from North Florida. He was trying to ambush one there. Came up empty on the big hack. Sweat's been one of the more consistent hitters for the Flames this season, but did struggle on the road this past weekend. Just 2 of 12 against Middle Tennessee. He was able to draw three walks in the series. Showed bunt there and took one just off the outer edge. We saw a double play in the top half of this inning. Sweat has ground into a team high six double plays. He's kind of been that guy this year, unfortunately, for Liberty in the lineup. Just hit a lot of Adam balls on the infield. That one gets away from the catcher. Both runners able to advance. So Sweat swings through it. Ballestero unable to hang on to it. And Liberty will, each runner will move up 90 feet. So a couple of breaks going the Flames way here early on as that one just looks like a pass ball that got by Ballestero. And it's even better than a, a sack bunt, right? Because now you've right. got your two guys in scoring position and you have your eight and spot, you have one job and that's getting the ball to the right side of the field. Two and two the count. Infield back, so it wouldn't take much to score the speedy Kepley from third base. Good speed on the base pads in both Kepley and Marsh. Sweat pops that one. Shallow right field, ranging out and making the catch is Tellier, and that's the one thing that won't get the job done. And Sweat pops out to second. Yeah, but you were right. That was probably the one instance of a ball to the right side that, that wouldn't get the job done. It was, wasn't far enough for the runner at third to tag, and, you know, Flames have one out now. So McCadden die, freshman catcher out of Virginia Beach, digs in. Die, another guy who's been, I don't know if you call him a surprise. They expected him to have a big role this season, but as well as he swung the bat at this stage of his career has been a pleasant surprise for, for this Flames lineup. I don't think they expected to see him bat and clean up in this portion of the season. But here he is, a chance to put the Flames on the board and stake Liberty to an early lead. Started with a Kepley walk, followed by an error that allowed Marsh to reach. And then a pass ball that Advanced them to second, third. That one gets in on the hand. Slow roller to third. The throw across in time, but it will bring Kepley home from third. And that's a great heads up play by Kepley, understanding that the third baseman's playing back and, and his speed versus that arm. You know, you have four or five steps that you're going to gain if that ball's coming down the line. That's great base running by Kane Kepley in the Flames. Yeah, Kepley did not hesitate. So Dye drives in the run. Flames go in front, still a runner out there is. Marsh stands at third base now for Todd Hudson. And what does he always say when guys in the lineup and also pitching? A chance to help yourself, Shane Quarterly. Exactly. Hudson swings through that one. Hudson in the Middle Tennessee series this past weekend, four for 10, three doubles and a home run. He also Drew four walks. Kid that has some pop in that 6-6 six, six frame. Fouls that one back and out of play. We've certainly seen it. We know it's in there in that six for, that six foot frame. Yeah. An opening series of the season. He put one in the parking lot. Chops that one towards first. It'll be handled by Gwene, and that really being a factor early last season. 
to being a star by season's end and comes in you know, to this year with as high of expectations as anybody in that Liberty lineup. Exactly, and, and I spoke with Andrew Koala earlier today, and, and one of the things he said is during those camps, as Emily mentioned, Ken Kepley wanted to run. So he wanted to show off his base speed. Yeah. You know, if those guys that got the hitting, typically in those camps, you only get a couple ABs to showcase your hitting, and they're not going to make you run. Well, Kepley said, hey, I'll go run. You know, I'll go show my speed. And, and it's those little things of just working hard, a little bit harder, and showing that you want to be out there that, that gets you that starting spot. Jake Reinish grounds that one to second base. Flames had the shift on and pays dividends here as Hayden Sweat able to track it down. One away here in the second. So Todd Hudson back out for a second inning of work. Got out of a little bit of a jam in the top half of the first inning thanks to an inning ending double play. And retires the first hitter he faces here in the second. Brings up the first baseman, Jack Winnay. Takes that one off the outer edge. Winnay comes in riding a seven game hitting streak. Watches back to back breaking balls miss off the outer edge. Think about all the talent Wake Forest lost from a season ago. Now, for a lot of programs, you would say, boy, it's going to take a while to rebuild, right? Exactly. And even talking with Tom Walter, he said, if you had told me five or six years ago, here's how much you would lose after a trip to Omaha, he's like, I'd say there's no, I mean, it's going to take us a few years to get back. He's like, I don't, you know what, now, he goes, I don't feel that way. The transfer portal, they've used it well. Coach Walter says, we're kind of a destination program now for guys going into the portal. And... They have filled some of the holes that were left behind. And, well, I know they, they still feel like they can play better baseball here in the second half of the season than they have to this point. They feel like they've got a team that can make another run. Exactly. And notoriously, they are. They're that team that, that plays methodical, that ACC baseball. Yeah, that one hit down the line and fair. Just stayed in inside that foul line. And Renee will check in at second base with a one-out double. That one slicing down the line and just did stay in fair territory as Wake Forest has a runner in scoring position now with one away. Just a good piece of hitting going the opposite way and, and just legging it out for the double. No win today, so we're not going to see a lot of traveling balls that, that are going farther than they should be. And, you know, those balls just land on the line or, and they, they work sometimes. Yeah, that's true. We have a lot of games here early in the spring, especially you get the wind being a factor blowing towards that right field corner. Not the case here this afternoon. Brings up the freshman Javar Williams. Kid out of Massachusetts and a kid that has really been playing well here of late. Tom Walter said he really adds a lot to this lineup with his skill set. You look at the his numbers here this past weekend against Louisville, just one for ten. But then you look a little deeper and see, well, he also drew five walks. So he's finding a way to get on base. And you see a guy, especially that young, drawing that many walks makes you think, well, he may have kind of an advanced approach at the plate, certainly for his age. One two pitch on the way that misses downstairs. And like I said, he's one of the Demon Deacons, six guys above 300. And as a freshman, to be able to hang that 300 batting average, you're going to find a spot. Two two pitch on the way. That's skied into foul territory, twisting out of play. So count remains two and two. Told you Todd Hudson his last time out. Which is two innings through 42 pitches. We'll see if Flames are able to stretch him out any further here tonight. That one fouled away again. Liberty has had a lot of question marks in that bullpen so far on, the, on this season. So they would certainly like to See Hudson eat up a few innings here in this one. 2-2 Two -two pitch on the way to Williams. Chop foul again. Yeah. 
Williams, the number one outfielder in the state of Massachusetts coming out of high school. He's lived up to that billing so far in his young collegiate career. 2-2 offering misses upstairs, and the count goes full. You mentioned these Demon Deacons are going to be hard to strike out, that they're very disciplined at the plate, and Hudson's going to have to come out and attack hitters early. So here comes the payoff pitch to Williams. And that one misses down and in. So for a second straight inning, Wake Forest has runners on first and second with just one out. In the first, the next hitter bounced into a double play. We'll see what Tate Ballestero is able to do with this opportunity as he digs in on the left-hand side. Ballestero, another one of those transfers that the Demon Deacons were able to get. Takes that one upstairs. He transfers in from St. John's. It's been scuffling a little bit at the plate here recently. Just one for his last 10. Again, the pitch missing in, and it feels like Todd Hudson has been pitching from behind all afternoon. And that's, it's a dangerous place to be with any lineup. It's a very dangerous place to be when you're facing a lineup the caliber of Wake Forest. Yep, exactly. And that's, you hit the nail on the head there. They're an attack, they're going to attack the strike zone, and they're not going to let you get ahead, or at least as much as they're able to, to put a hold of that. So quick chat with McCadden Dye. See if that settles the big right hander down. 2 0 pitch coming. Ground ball to second, could be two. Sweat to second for one. Marsh to first in time. And that Liberty infield defense has picked up Todd. Foster, what a weekend he had against Middle Tennessee. Six for 11. Couple home runs, both of them coming on Sunday. Six RBIs on the weekend. Five of those coming on Sunday. He was really struggling in the early part of the season, swinging the bat. And now got that batting average up just shy of 270. And he's had multi-hit games in four of his last five. And he puts a pretty good swing on that one. That line drive gets down. Williams gets to it quickly and keeps Foster to just a single. But it's a ringing single for the Flames' third baseman. And for the second inning in a row, they have their leadoff man on. And that's just, you know, like I said, position A for the Flames, if they can get their, their guys on early and often. Cam Foster's that puzzle piece that Liberty's been looking to, yeah. to just produce, and he's been everywhere in the lineup. And I think once Cam Foster gets that back consistent, he's, he's going to be a threat. Yeah, a lot of expectations on him coming into the year to be a run producer, and he's done it kind of in, in spurts. But if you can get that consistently from him, it does change the look of this lineup. This is another guy Liberty would like to get going. Cam Detroyer. Hitting just 207. Belts that one, but he's out in front. And that is a long foul ball. There must be a magnet over there. I'm right telling there. you, we have seen some just launched up onto the road there in foul territory. One and one to count to Troyer. Long look in from Schnosky. Now comes to the plate. Troyer, that one got in on his hands just enough. Skied out to right field. Reinish started back. Now comes in to make the grab. And one out recorded. You know, one thing we're seeing from Ben Schnowski and the Demon Deacons is just attacking the strike zone and, and moving that fastball in the inner and the outer half. That's, I believe, the second or the third ball off the hands for the Flames that it, one, a couple of them drop and, you know, a couple of them get caught. But it's moving the fastball and commanding on the inner and the outer half. Yeah, Schnowski, a guy that they say is a true four-pitch pitcher. Fastball, curveball, slider change. He can throws them all pretty evenly. Like sometimes you'll see a guy who's well, he's 70 percent fastball, and then the other 30 he'll mix in some some other off-speed stuff. But Schnaski, a guy that can throw any four of those pitches in any count, faces Brian McClellan here with one away. There's a breaking ball in there for the strike. 
We've talked about it on a few broadcasts. You know, when you have the command of the fastball and the inner and outer half, it, it sharpens up those other pitches, right. that those change-ups, those sliders. They look like they're going to be a fastball for a long time. Oh, one pitch, foul back. McClellan down in the count now, 0-2. McClellan, 3 for 11 in the Middle Tennessee series. All three of those hits coming on Sunday. Gonna have to battle here down to the count. That one got a piece of it. No, he will stay, and they punched him out. Home plate umpire Jeff Francis says that McClellan reached that arm out to create the contact, and he just punched him out. You could read Scott Jackson's lips saying, yeah, but the, the ball is in the batter's box, is what Scott Jackson just said. And another thing to think about, too, it was an off-speed, it was a slider or a curveball. So that pitch is, is starting on the batter's box side and, and ultimately ending into the strike zone. So if, if that ball's coming at you at the beginning, of course you're going you're gonna to turn away from it. Let's take another look. There's the breaking ball, and it caught just the sleeve of his jersey. So this is reviewable. And initially... They had said they were going to take a look at it. Now, are they going to review this one? You can review hit by pitch, and that includes the intent of the batter as part of the review. So they'll take a look at it. They'll go underneath the stadium here and take another look at that one to see if they can make a better determination. But yeah, you're right, the breaking ball and I'll tell you, I've seen more egregious, certainly, over the years of that kind of the chicken wing sticking the arm out. And it almost on that one was like McClellan started to do that, thought better of it and started to pull it back in. But by that point, Jeff Francis had seen enough and had made, it, made up his mind. But we'll see what they elect to do here following the review. And they're taking their time on it, too, to, to make sure that they're getting the right call. I think there's no question that that was going to be a ball regard. I mean, it wasn't right. inhibiting a strike call by any means. Be interested to see how this one is ruled. Yeah, and I think that was the argument more so than anything that Scott Jackson was making there initially. Was it? It wasn't a strike. Here we go. The crew emerges. And they call him out. So there you go. I think if you had to hang your hat on it, it was the arm, it, the yep. chicken wing, as you called it, the, the action. But really, it's that's a tough play. I mean, the ball's coming at you. You're, you're trying to get on, and it's tough. So officially, it's a strikeout for the second out in the inning. So yeah, there's a look at everything that's reviewable. This and hit batter being one of those things. So now there's two away for the nine-hole hitter, Braden Horton. And that obviously changes the complexion of this inning a lot. If that's a hit batter, suddenly Liberty, two runners on, one out. And now, still have that runner, Cam Foster, who started the inning with the single, still standing there at first base with two away. The man at the plate right now, Braden Horton, a guy who led this team in hitting a year ago. 341 average as a freshman, but broke his hand just weeks before the season began. And that kind of slowed him at the beginning of the year. And he's been swinging it better. May 14th down at Wake Forest. Cam Nelson leads things off for Wake here in the third. Nine hole hitter. Mason Todd Hudson. And that is a line shot snagged by Aiden Sweat. That boy can jump. Boy, he had to go to the top step of the ladder to snag that one. As that ball was scalded. So again, this Liberty defense helping out Todd Hudson. They turned two in each of the first two frames. 
Hudson says, you know, if you're 6'6", six, six like I am, you don't even have to jump for that ball. That's a great point. <laughs> you got to give kudos to the strength and conditioning program here at Liberty. <laughs> That's at that. right. <laughs> the box That's jumps right. are showing there. So that's shown off the vert. That one hit down the line. Fair off the bat of Houston. He'll make the wide turn. Going to try to stretch it to two. The throw to second. Not in time. Pretty good throw from Camden Troyer. But Houston hustling the entire way. And he's got his second hit of the afternoon. Yeah, I'd venture to say if that throw was, was a little bit more on time, that the throw beat the runner to the bag. It was just, you know, part of the turf slide and, and a, good, a good 90. Or should I say a good 180. Houston, who we mentioned, just coming back from injury, he missed the last four games, showing no signs of rust. He has a single and a double in his first two at bats. So once again, Wake Forest, runner in scoring position. It's been the case most of the day. They just haven't been able to cash in. Adam Tellier going to try to change that. Missing inside, 2-0 the count. Tell your sacrifice bunt back in the first. <laughs> 2 0 pitch on the way from Hudson. That misses. He's fighting his control here a bit. He's not the guy you want to get 3-0, you know, with a runner in scoring position. Well, and this is a lineup that you start handing out free passes, they can make it hurt in a hurry. Three and one now the count. Tell your nine game hitting streak coming into the day matches the longest by a Wake Forest player this year. And that one misses upstairs. So tell your's on for the first time today. And as we said in the first inning, as we said in the second inning, Wake Forest, runners on first and second, one away. We know the result in each of those first two instances. Nick Kurtz trying to avoid hitting a ground ball at an infielder here and suffering the same fate as a couple of his teammates. You got to think that is rule number one, right? right. Expectation number one is, is do not ground into the double play. <laughs> Kurtz, uh, he walked his first time up. Flames will shift him on the infield, play him to pull. As that one misses up and out. No action yet in that Liberty bullpen. Some guys starting to kind of move around a little bit. Nobody throwing in earnest yet. one -oh pitch on the way to Kurtz. That one misses well outside, and it's 2-0 the count now. And Hudson really having a hard time finding the strike zone. You'll remember Kurtz. Last time up, hit a couple of monstrous shots that he pulled foul down the right field line. So if you come in on him, better be careful. They came way in there. Now it's 3-0, and and Hudson in danger of walking them loaded. Kurtz with a big smile on his face, I guess. Tells you about his confidence level right now. You coming in as a DH, you got one job, right? And it's to hit the ball hard. And he doesn't get the opportunity. Four pitch walk, and now they're loaded. I think we might see a visit, a mountain visit in some fashion here. Yeah, and I think you're going to see some folks starting to crank it up in that Liberty bullpen. As I say that, a right hander starts getting up and getting loose. But really, at the end of the day, it's it's a one pitch out of the inning like we've seen the last first two innings. Well, that's what you have to tell yourself. And that, that one pitch twin killing that they got back in the first inning came with this guy at the plate, Seaver King. He bounced into a 6-3 double play to get Hudson out of a jam in the first. Right-hander looking for something similar here. That won't happen. Little jam shot gets down into right field. One run home. That's all they'll get. As Seaver King just drops one into right field, good enough to bring in Houston, and we're tied up 1-1. And again, that's a great play by Cameron Troyer getting that ball in it it's almost as quick as you can to limit it to one run. At the end of the day, it was station to station, and the double play is still in order. It's about as least hurtful as that score could have been, you know, at least hurtful as the, as the Demon Deacons could have made it. So 
still loaded now, one away for Jake Reinisch. Big swing, no contact. Reinisch bounced out to second base his first time up. He was a guy who had a great freshman campaign, or I guess a sophomore campaign back in 2022. Struggled last year. As a kind of a knee injury early in the year, maybe rushed back a little too quickly. Kind of never did get on track a season ago. It just 171 in 26 games, but has bounced back in a great way here this year. Breaking ball misses upstairs, two and one to count. Reinish, another guy, very selective at the plate. 22 walks coming in, that's second best on the team. But scalds that one just past the glove of Aiden Sweat. That gets down, another run comes home. And once again, just going station to station in Wake Forma. And has a chance to really put his stamp on this game here in the early going. Base is loaded, one away. Kurtz, King, and Reinish the runners. As Blair comes to the plate, fastball foul back. Blair runs it up there at 94. We'll see him throw up a lot of 94s, touch 95 occasionally. Fastball slider change, the change up. He uses probably a little more than that slider. 0-1 pitch on the way, again with the fastball, sharply hit to short, to second for one, the throw to first, in time, and the double play comes up clutch once again for the Flames. Third double. Corrective exercises. Two, analytics. What's the ball doing? It's important because we develop our pitch plan and pitch design based on what makes these guys unique. And three, finally, the art of pitching, fielding your position and doing the little things that help you win games. Coach said it might be like $600,000 in equipment, but none of that matters if you don't have the people that can process the data. Guys, I think maybe the most impressive detail in all of this is that 27 people are on staff at Wake Forest with all eyes on this pitching development program. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the, you know, in some ways, kind of the, the envy of college baseball. We talk about some of the guys they've turned out, even, you know, Coach was talking about Rhett Lauder, who ended up being a seventh overall pick in this past year's Major League Baseball draft, as that one grounded to first, one away. And, and he was saying, you know, a lot of places, they would have tried to change Rhett Lauder and make him kind of fit what they wanted him to do. He goes, but because of the lab, we could see how his body worked, how it operated. And so then we just maximized what he was already kind of built to do to be as good as he could be. And you, you're seeing that with other guys and you're seeing, we touched on it a little bit earlier when the, about talk, talking about the transfer portal. You're seeing guys that now want to come to Wake Forest, maybe started someplace else because of that pitching lab. And they think, man, I could go from being a third or fourth round pick that maybe if, if they find a few things that I can maximize, I could become a first round pick. And so they really have become a destination because of that. And, and their pitching development especially has been key to that. And it's becoming a standard in, yeah. in Division One baseball, nonetheless. I went chop to third. King gets it on the big hop to throw across in time and quickly two away here in the third inning. If you're Liberty here, you're looking just to slow the pace of this game down here and, you know, let Blair get a, a, a breather and kind of prepare for the ending. Just need to slow the game down a little bit. Yeah, Schnosky looking for a quick third as Aiden Sweat digs in. That one missing down and out. Nobody up in that Wake Forest pin. Tom Walter saying he'd like to still have Schnosky for the weekend, so they don't want to keep him out there too long. Wake Forest has a series at home against North Carolina here this coming weekend. As now it's 3-0 to Sweat. Sweat popped out to second base his first time up. It's a four-pitch walk. 
So Sweat's on with two away. That'll get McCadden die at the play. Die has the lone Liberty RBI in this ball game as he bounced down to third base. Good enough to drive home King Kepley back in the first. Die hitting 277 now on the year. Lines that one sharply, but right in the third baseman King, and that'll do it for the Flames. A feeling second baseman as there is in the country. And those two guys have been fantastic up the middle. So we head to the fourth now. Javar Williams, the freshman, to lead things off for Wake Forest. It'll be the seven, eight, nine hitters due up for the Demon Deacons. Williams walked back in the second inning. Blair bounced that one in there. You know, some guys in, on the mound, you see the real slow, smooth delivery. Blair is kind of a little herky-jerky, violent with that lead leg. What, what do you make of the way he comes to the plate? Yeah, it's it's a little bit erratic, and it, nonetheless, it's hard to pick up the ball with those guys that are a little bit more erratic. The ball maybe is, is behind the body more. It, it's a tough to pick up as a hitter. I mean, he kicks that front leg downward like he's trying to stop stomp on a cockroach or something, you know? <laughs> like, it's with there's some force behind it. One-two pitch on the way. That fastball misses off the outer edge. And it's really almost across the body, too. So it really, as a hitter, I would venture to say that it is hard to pick up that arm action from that arm slot. 2-2 Two -two pitch. And just staying alive is Javar Williams as he got a piece of it. Blair, we mentioned, pitched in high school at Liberty Christian Academy. Each of his last two seasons in high school. Had an ERA under one both of those seasons. Big high chopper out to Sweat. Takes it on two hops. Quick flip to first base in time to retire Williams. So one away here in the fourth. That'll bring up Tate Ballestero. He was one of the Wake Forest hitters to bounce into a double play here this evening. That was to end things in the second inning. That one almost got him as it ran in on him. Alistero trying to bunt his way on right back to the mound. Blair fields and throws a strike to first base. Two away. Was a pitcher. That's about as easy as it gets, isn't it? A little, almost like a little comebacker. Exactly. And, and as a as a fielder, you, you know, you do this the the switch for a reason. And, and you have two options as a hitter. You either hit into it or, or you try to outsmart the switch. I tell you, they play the switch for a reason, and it's hard to go the other way sometimes. And it, it's take what you can get. So two outs now, and a fastball right in there to the nine hole hitter Cam Nelson. Nelson hit the ball hard his last time up, but a leaping snag by the second baseman, Aiden Sweat, robbed him of a base hit. Now Nelson finds himself down in the count 0 2. Nelson, another young player, freshman out of Baltimore, Maryland. With Williams, Nelson had kind of an added speed element to this lineup, but. Blair makes quick work of him, and he sits down this way. Out there, that's Zach Johnston, it looks like, getting loose. Todd Hudson to lead things off. He was the starter on the bump for the Flames, remains in the game, continues to hit for himself. Here in the fourth. Skies that one, pretty well struck, but got underneath it. Ranging over into right center field as Reinish to make the grab, and one away here in the fourth inning. Yep, and like you said, he just missed it. And unfortunately, we're at one of those days at the ballpark where the wind is stagnant. It's just still stagnant. We don't have any wind blowing out or blowing in at the baseball park. Yeah, kind of a cool evening, 55 degrees. Not too much of a breeze. Decent crowd on hand here tonight. You'll see folks gathering around the fire pits up on the concourse as the temperature continues to drop. Cam Foster digs in now, his second at bat. He singled back in the first, or second inning, I should say. 
line drive that he pulled into left field. Foster, you see all the tools. Big 6'5 frame. He's able to get those arms extended, big time power. Skies this one a mile straight up on the infield. Calling for it and taking it is the second baseman, Tellier. And so this has been, I would dare say, as good as Tom Walter could have hoped for his starter, Ben Schnosky. He's about to give him four strong innings. As he continues to kind of build on his season. He's a guy that kind of moved into this midweek role. Went four innings his last time out, giving up just one run against High Point. Strikeouts haven't been there the same way today as they were the last time. He had six in his last outing, just two today. But he's done a really good job throwing a lot of strikes, keeping Flames hitters off balance. And was able to work out of a little jam in the first inning and has been pretty much in control ever since. Pitching to Cam Detroyer here. He fouls that back and out of play. Evens the count of two and two. One of the keys, too, for Schnosky, he's just never really been behind in the count. You know, there's yeah. been a couple times where it's been a 3-0 or a 3-2, but it's never been several counts of 2-0, 1-0. That one hits Troyer. He will be allowed to take his base as that fastball runs in. And so the Flames have a base runner with two away. For those of you just joining us, the guy that's coming to the plate right now, Brian McClellan, go back to the second inning was hit by a pitch on the arm but the home plate umpire Jeff Francis ruled that he initiated the contact with the pitch and so he rang him up stands in there now with two outs and takes a fastball and first strike Troyer at first base couple stolen bases on the year has been thrown out once. They'll check on him, throw over. Schnosky trying to get through this fourth, and you have to think that if he does, that would probably bring it into his day. Also, with the guy up and throwing in the pin, you almost wonder if McClellan finds his way on here. Could that bring an end to the day for Schnosky? So, this may. May well be the last hitter he faces either way. Again throwing over, keeping a close eye on Troyer. They are awfully concerned about Cam Detroyer over there at first base. Yeah, but you make a good point, too. Aside from just keeping him honest, it's given the guy in the bullpen time to warm up and just, you know, for that next hitter, you could be very right with that. Long look in. Here he comes to the play. That misses upstairs. So a 2-1 count now to Brian McClellan. And with the pitch count, you got to get creative on how you can give time, right? Because right? you can't just step off and the clock. Yeah, exactly. You can almost max it out. That one chopped over to Scott Jackson in that third base coach's box. Evens the count up at two and two. Scott Jackson not afraid to make a play. Good hands over there. If you're looking for a scouting report on the third base coaches, I'd say one of the best fielders we've seen this year. That one in the dirt. Troyer takes off, reads it well, and is able to advance to second base. So no hesitation from Camden Troyer as he saw that ball down. And now your base hit away from tying this thing up. That was ruled a wild pitch, by the way, as the 3-2 offering all the way from Ben Schnosky. That bounces up there as well. That's going to allow Troyer to advance to third. And McClellan will make his way down to first base. And Schnosky was cruising. 
quickly retired the first two hitters in this inning, but get a little dicey now. Hit Troyer, now walk to McClellan, and that one wasn't close. Yeah, that was one of those famous 55-foot pitches right there. You throw and, any of those? Yeah, oh, yeah. I've, I'm guilty of it. I think everyone that stepped foot on the mound yeah. at the Division One level. Little hitter Braden Horton up for the Flames. A lefty on lefty. That one gets through. And coming down from third to score is Camden Troyer. So one pitch, and it goes right through the wickets of Ballestero. And we're all knotted up at two apiece. And that's just the game of baseball right there. You know, you, you come unconnected for one pitch, and it wasn't necessarily a wild pitch per se, but maybe a cross-up. Just, boy, yeah, that just let that thing get underneath the glove. Exactly, and it wasn't too much, and Flames capitalized. They are ruling it a wild pitch. So McClellan advances to second base, as well as Troyer coming home. And now Liberty a base knock away from potentially taking the lead here. Horton a strikeout victim his first time up. Slow breaking ball, misses outside the zone. Two and one the count. Got in on him. Slow roller out to second base, and that'll be enough to retire Horton. But the Flames, thanks to a little help, tie this thing up with, with one in the fourth. The play has been the Flames' best friend here with head coach Scott Jackson. Looking ahead, how does your bullpen continue to find success against not only a disciplined but talented Wake Forest yeah, lineup? Uh, we're going to have to execute pitches. I mean, they're really good, and, you know, we've gotten in some trouble, like you said, gotten out of it with the double play, and, you know, we've made some pitches kind of when we've had to, we'll try to avoid that traffic and be a little bit more aggressive early in the count and try to get ourselves in better counts on the mound. How are you guys finding a way? Is this just what this offense is? Only two, only one hit in this game, but you guys are all tied up here. Yeah, they've given us some help, and we've taken advantage of it. You know, really good job on a dirt ball there by Cam Troyer, which, you know, we talk about all the time in practice, and it led to a run. So we'll see if we can get a little few more hits and do it. A little more sexy than just the one hit and <laughs> one hit and some walks and some freebies. So. All right, coach. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, that's that's what I think of when I think of Scott Jackson teams. Sexy. Perfect. That's that's the word that comes to mind. Now, you think of a team that grinds it out as that line drive right back up the middle. Merrick Houston. Well, I tell you what, guys, gonna say. Give me, a, give me a couple weeks off here every now and then, and this is what you get. I come coming back feeling fresh. Missed the last four games. Comes in, gets the start here today, and he's three for three. And hits a lightning bolt up the middle, too, with just kind of a good momentum starter for the Deacons. And then once again, we got a runner on first with nobody out. Yeah, the leadoff man on. He's been on now three times today. Gets Adam Tellier to the plate. Two plate appearances, no official at bats. He had a sacrifice bunt back in the first inning, drew a walk, and eventually came around to score in the third. That walk, by the way, means Tellier has now reached safely in all 24 games this season. What a luxury to have somebody like that you can just count on, even if they're not swinging it particularly well, which he has for most of this season. He still finds a way he get himself on base. Finds himself down in the count here, though, 0-2. Blair comes set, comes to the plate. Breaking ball right in there. Just throws him with the slider. And that's one of the best sliders we've seen Blair throw this season. And delivered with confidence, too, on the outer half. That's what you get when you pitch with confidence and you just command the zone. When you're around it and you're, you're pounding the zone, first pitch strikes, you're going to be more confident to throw that slider with 0-2. So a big first out for the freshman right-hander. One away now for Nick Kurtz. Kurtz takes a pitch right in there for strike one. Kurtz today has walked both at bats. He, too, coming back after missing some time with a shoulder injury, injured, diving for a baseball. Thought about it, checked up, called strike on the outer half, and the count now 0-2. Kurtz, preseason first-team All-American, as named by D1 Baseball. Guy who last season hit 22 home runs. 
That coming after one of the best seasons ever by a freshman in Wake Forest program history back in 2022. He was a freshman All-American. So this is a guy very highly regarded, not only in the collegiate ranks, but looking ahead to his pro prospects as well. So a guy like this, even when you have him down in the Calo with two, you know he can still hurt you. Exactly, and you got a coach Walter at third to just, you know, we saw that we saw everyone leaving with a smile when they're done. It's managing the game. So Houston takes his lead off of first. Here comes the 0-2 offering from Blair. Missing down and in. Three double plays Wake Forest has bounced into in this ball game. Blair would love to make it a fourth. Missing down and in for a second time. And the count goes from 0-2 now to 2-2. Blair, a guy the Flames think has starter potential in his future. But for now, he's been really one of the most consistent key pieces out of that Liberty bullpen. 2-2 two -two pitch. Won't be able to turn two on this one. High chopper to first, race to the bag in time as McClellan able to beat Kurtz to the base for the second out. Meanwhile, Houston advances to second base. And just great, great Liberty baseball right there for on defense. Tanner Marsh made a great play that kind of went unseen there uh, by going back and covering third base. Third base was vacated at that point. So limiting an extra 90 feet, kudos up to uh, Tanner Marsh. Yeah, you're right. He went sprinting from his shortstop position as Houston had his eyes on maybe advancing not just one, but two bases on the play. So two away now. Seaver King at the plate. Takes a fastball away. King bounced into a double play back in the first inning at an RBI single in the third. King, a guy at the D2 level, hit 408 a season ago. Goes the other way, and it's through. Troyer gets to it quickly, the throw home, and it is. Out. What do we have? Wow! So they overturn it and call him safe at the plate. Well, I'm, I am with you. I, I guess the hard part, but at, ha, having played and knowing, like trying to get the the hop, like. What are you what are you supposed to do? Yeah, long hop or no hop is the is the scenario. So I mean it's it's good baseball all around. It, unfortunately, like I said, it was going to be a coin flip on if they were going to call that obstruction because you're taught to take that no hop or long hop. It's just the, the fact the throw took it over the baseline. And obviously, yeah, as a player, your instinct is to try to give yourself the best chance to not you're not even thinking about blocking the runner from the play. You're just thinking about What's my best chance to snag this cleanly and have a chance to apply a tag? Yep. If it happens to kind of lead you into base path a little bit, that's just kind of kind of part of it. But obviously, safety a major concern in all these decisions as well, and in these rules that are in place. And a break there for for Wake Forest as they jump in front. So Jake Ryan is up there now with two away. Runner over there at first. Seaver King, that's his second RBI single of the day, by the way. And now Ben Blair on the mound has to kind of refocus. He was standing around there for a little while, waiting for that review to finish up. And now struggling to find the strike zone. You know, it's controlling your emotions, too. That was a very, I mean, us in the booth were so excited. I can't imagine playing how excited you are on the field, too. So just controlling the emotions. And that one seemed to miss. So a four-pitch walk to Reinish. And talking about controlling the emotions for Ben Blair. Now you're trying to just not let this thing really turn and go from a one-run inning for Wake Forest into a, an inning where they hang a crooked number. Jack Winnet up there now, one for two on the day. Doubled back in the second. 
Flames play him to pull on the infield as he swings through that slider. One thing we've noticed, too, by these Demon Deacons is that they're attacking that first pitch a lot more often than the first couple innings. It's wonder if you've seen that in the scouting report for them. Dye snags that slider working away from him. Yeah, able to hang on to that one, one-on-one -on -one the count. We've seen, we've seen Blair throw that slider a lot more, I feel like, in this outing than he has some others this season. King at second, Ryan is at first. I chopper, that'll be wide of the bag. One and two now to count. When they extended his hitting streak to eight games with that double back in the second inning as you see some action out there in that Liberty bullpen. That was Trey Carter, the right-hander up and throwing. One-two pitch from Blair. Fastball at 95, misses up and out. Blair trying to fight his way through this fifth inning. Two-two pitch back to the slider. Line drive, and the Flames had him played perfectly. Shift pays off there. Coach Tom Walter. Coach, you told us to expect two to three innings out of Ben Shinovsky. He gave you three and two-thirds. What were you most pleased about his start? Well, really pleased with the first inning. He battled around some adversity. You know, it walks the first guy, then we make an error behind him. We have a, a, a pass ball, and all of a sudden, second and third with nobody out, and he got us in there with just one run. So really pleased with how he dealt with that. Offensively, you guys are, the bats are working. You're getting runners on. You're having calls overturn. How much does that momentum help? And is it just about chipping away? Long way to go, as you just said. Yeah, long way to go. we got to keep putting people on base and, and somehow try to cash them in. We've left a ton of guys on, hit into three double plays. So hopefully some balls start finding some holes here. Thanks for your time, Coach. Best of luck in the rest of the game, guys. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Yeah, a lot of opportunities out there. I mean, you take a look at the scoreboard. Seven hits. For Wake Forest, just the one for Liberty. And yet, Demon Deacons just the one run lead. It's top of the lineup here for the Flames in the fifth. King Kepley wears that one. So, leadoff man on, and one with great speed as Kepley makes his way down to first base. Second time he's reached here tonight. We've seen him do it every possible way over the course of the season. We've seen him hit the home run. We've seen him get on base. We've seen him get draw the walk on a six-pitch at bat. We've seen, seen him, him hit wear by a fastball. Yeah, yeah it just he, the guy does it all. Whatever you need. Kepley, eight stolen bases on the year, takes his lead as Tanner Marsh digs in. Marsh takes a rip at that first offering, fouls it back and out of play. Eck Johnston still out there for Wake Forest. He from North Yarmouth, Maine. Gonna throw over. Yeah, you think about pitchers from Maine. Flames, one quickly comes to mind. Trevor DeLate is a great pitcher for Liberty out of the state of Maine. Has that went in there for a strike, count one to one. But former coaches from Maine, Garrett Quinn. Yeah, pitching coach for Liberty. He was also from Maine, yes. I think we're quickly exhausting our main fun facts. Just getting a piece of that one was Tanner Marsh. Nick Johnson up from a little bit north of Portland, Maine. Went to Portland one time. And there's a place there, you would enjoy this, I, I think, Shane. They sell donuts, but they're like potato donuts. It's like made with some sort of potato dough. I think you would enjoy. So do you, you dunk it this. in ketchup? You don't dunk it, no, no, it's not okay. a fry. It's not a french fry, but it's just like a heavy, heavy kind of donut with some sort of potato dough. Okay. So it's just like a heavier, denser donut. But it's still a sweet. Like it's a, still sweet, okay. it's still a normal donut. Yeah, no ketchup, no ketchup involved. That's, no, that's different. That'll be my main focus yes. if I go up yeah. to Portland. Yeah. That's right. Well, <laughs> may have to make your way up there at some point. 
Johnson locked in a battle with Tanner Marsh right now. Count remains one and two. Marsh lays off. That one gets away and far enough for Kane Kepley to scamper on down to second base. So Flames with a runner in scoring position. That'll be a wild pitch. By the way, we're getting a report. The rain starting to fall lightly now. That was a text from Emily. She's actually down in it, you know? So she, she sends us all the weather reports. We're tucked away in this cozy little booth. 2-2 pitch, and just reached back and threw it by Tanner Marsh. So a big strikeout for Zach Johnston for the first out of the inning. And also great work by Tate Ballestero behind the plate. That, that ball in the dirt almost took him to his right on an off-speed pitch and doing everything he could to kind of limit that free pass to, to 90 feet. So brings up Aiden Sweat now. Sweat 0 for 1, also drew a walk. Makes a breaking ball down. I told you Sweat. Didn't have a great series against Middle Tennessee, just 2 for 12. That average still just above 300 on the year. And finds himself in a hitter's count here, 2 and 0. Sweat an all-conference performer in the A-Sun a year ago, but as a second baseman for North Florida before transferring to Liberty during the offseason. Slashes that one the other way just wide. Got that one down around the end of the bat. Lands a couple feet foul. Wake Forest playing him the pull on the infield, and he was just making a bid for extra bases going the other way. That rain starts to fall a little bit harder. Folks making a run for cover. That pitch misses down and in. Three and one now to count. And the rain, it, it plays a toll on the field, too. We're going to see a lot of baseballs moving a little quicker. I mean, in Liberty's used to on that here. turf a little bit. Exactly right. Three one pitch coming to the Flames' second baseman. Aiden Sweat stands in. That one misses badly, and Kepley took off on the pitch. So he swipes third as Aiden Sweat works the walk. And now Liberty with runners on the corners just one away. Yeah, and that's actually the second pitch this uh, this inning for Zach Johnson that looks to maybe have gotten away from him. Uh, you know, we've, we mentioned it was a little wet. It, it maybe ball slipped. Yeah, you can see him almost shaking his hand a little bit there. Chance for another one here. Big, slow breaking ball. Misses on the first offering. Die 16 RBIs on the season. Trying to find something he can get into the air. That one missing in, and right now Johnston really fighting his control. the 2-0 runner goes pump fake no throw to second and so sweat moves up and that takes the double play out of order yep, it's the best case scenario and, and as the flames you're putting the pressure on the demon deacons and as the demon deacons it's it's no, no harm no foul that's the third stolen base of the season for aiden sweat now they're just going to put mccadden die on so they're going to intentionally walk McCadden die. We said the double play taken out of order. Well, put back in order now. And the reason for that is, is your lefty-lefty matchup. You have your Todd Hudson, and then you have your lefty on the mound in Zach Johnston. It's, it's on paper. This is a hitter. You're trying to find something that you can elevate, something that you can get up in the air, keep yourself out of a double play possibility. First pitch misses away. Job number one, though, for Hayden LeFew. You throw strikes. Yep, exactly. Demon Deacons both have the third base and first base playing in, obviously, to, to force that runner at home. And middle middle is playing double play depth. That one hit well to right field. And the catch made coming in. Tagging from third is Kepley. The throw home, not going to be in time. And now it gets away from the catcher, Ballestero, and both runners advance. So Hudson 
didn't exactly scorch it, but he hit it well enough to get the job done with the speed of Kepley. And the Flames then take advantage of that ball kicking away. I'll tell you what, with, with Kepley gunning from third and tagging on that play, it adds a little bit of, of craziness to the play. And kudos to Liberty's base runners, heads up running and advancing that 90 feet to now have two players, two runners in scoring position. So that brings up Cam Foster now. Foster with an opportunity to really turn this game here in the fifth inning. Sweat, the runner at third base. McCadden dies, stands at second. The few, the pitch home. Skied out towards right center field after starting back. Now hustling in. And the center fielder, Nelson, closes. Now they turn things over to Trey Cooper. The lefty. This will be his ninth appearance. For Cooper, a guy a lot was expected of him coming into the year. He was talked about as being that closer at the back end of the bullpen. Hasn't quite gone according to plan uh, on the season. He really struggled some early on. A guy with some really good stuff as he, if he's able to harness it. 14 strikeouts in just nine in innings of work. So he'll face the bottom third of this Wake Forest lineup, beginning with Javar Williams. And whoa, that breaking ball took a hard right turn headed towards that Liberty dugout. I thought it was a Frisbee, to be honest with you. It looked like <laughs> Fastball, changeup, curveball, slider for Trey Cooper. There's the fastball, checking in at 92. He'll usually sit 91 to 93 with the fastball. three-mile-an-hour heater. Cooper, like some other guys in this Liberty bullpen, just comes down to, can you fill up the strike zone? The 14 walks in nine innings is great. The th or 14 strikeouts, I should say. It's the 13 walks. That's the issue. Breaking ball hit, booted momentarily. The throw across, not in time. So Cam Foster unable to snag it on the first attempt. And that'll likely go down as an E5. And that's one of the hardest hit balls to field as a baseball player. It's the lefty with that's late on the ball that hits it to third base. On top of not expecting it, the ground's, the ground's a little wet. I think it just got on Cam a little quicker, Cam Foster. That is ruled in air, so Wake Forest, their leadoff man on. And a guy with some pretty good speed over there in Williams. That fastball blown right by Tate Ballestero. Ballestero 0 for 2, including bouncing into a double play back in the second inning. Flames play him the other way in the outfield as that fastball just misses off the outer edge. for strike two. Ballesteros was last time up. He was hitting from the left side. Liberty was playing him in the shift on the infield, and he tried to just kind of reach out, half bunt, half kind of just poke the ball the other way to get on base. Instead, just hit it right back to the pitcher. This one skied down that left field line. Everybody chasing it. Foster working around that dugout railing and unable to make the play. Yeah, and that's a tough play there, too. With, there's, there's a railing for everyone watching. There's a railing with about three feet of, of room that actually separates out of bounds from the railing. So technically, the railing is in. You'd have to find your way around it to make that play. So Ballestero, it's new life here is very easily could have been an out. Takes one away there to even count of two and two. Ballestero hit 288 with 10 home runs a season ago for St. John's. Has struggled to swing it quite as well this year with the Demon Deacons. Just a 218 average as he stands in now. One 
for his last 12 at the plate. Trying to see if he can connect with Trey Cooper and that fastball elevated just a little bit. Is able to sneak it by him for the second out, or first out, I should say. See, when you can reach back and grab 92, 93, and you elevate a fastball, change eye levels, it's, it's a very effective pitch late in the count. So one out now for the center fielder, Cam Nelson. Nelson 0 for 2. It's a lefty-lefty matchup here. Oh, we've seen Cooper be able to control that fastball pretty well here so far in this outing. And, and being ahead in the zone, or ahead in the count as well. Again, comes right back with it. Finds the zone, now ahead in the count 0-2. With a whole arsenal of pitches to reach back and pick. I mean, you're ahead in the count, there's a million things you can throw. Let's see what Cooper decides to offer here. Came back with the fastball, tied him up. Nelson fortunate to foul that one away. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't think sometimes as a pitcher, like, you're trying to think, like, what's he think I'm going to throw in this situation? Yep. You know, too, a lot of times hitters probably think, oh, what's his nasty, his off-speed pitch? You're ready for that. Sometimes you can sneak that fastball by him. 0-2. There was the breaking ball. Chopped up the middle. Sweat. Tried to deflect it to second base. Everybody going to be safe. He tried to just take the glove and kind of punch it. Towards his shortstop, Marsh. The ball just didn't get there. Watch him just kind of try to half punch, half kind of flip that thing straight with the glove to his shortstop. And so everybody ends up being safe. I would have liked to see, I, I believe he had time at first to just maybe catch it and, and get the feet moving towards first. But hey, if you see that you got no time, definitely at second was going to be a close play. So that's going to be ruled a single. So you had the error on Cam Foster to start the inning that allowed Javar Williams to reach. Now Cam Nelson reaches on what's being ruled a hit, but certainly was a play that the Flames had an opportunity to get an out on. And now the lineup turns over to a guy you have not gotten out today. Merrick Houston. Cooper quickly ahead of him, though, here 0-2. Houston, a single, double, single in his three at-bats. Cooper with the 0-2 offering, misses up and out. Flames infield, which has been so good throughout the season, so good here today. They've turned three double plays, but they're going to need see if they can help out Trey Cooper a little bit more here in this sixth inning. A couple of miscues. Now, now evens up at two and two. And that's a good pitch sequence there, you know, to raise the eye level of the hitter and then to come back and bury that slider. You know, that's a very good attacking a hitter. You're 2-2 two -two now, and now you got to really just challenge him with your best. Here it comes, 2-2 two -two offering. Misses upstairs with the fastball. Now the count goes full. Houston has his average up to 333 on the year. A guy that hit just 215 in his freshman campaign a year ago. Awaits the payoff pitch now from Trey Cooper. And he buries it. So now Cooper is in a jam. Base is loaded. One away. And to make matters worse, Wake Forest leading hitter standing at the plate. Adam Tellier. Tellier, 368 batting average. He is just 0 for 1 today. Breaking ball in there for a strike. When the Flames have needed it pretty much all afternoon, 
They've been able to induce the ground ball at an infielder. They need it here. Cooper comes to the plate. Back-to-back -back breaking balls and ahead in the count 0-2. And, and Trey, Trey Cooper's done a great job at getting ahead, and it's just it's staying locked in and, and really doubling down on those 0-2 pitches. And just because those first two pitches in the at-bat were, were strikes, the, the third pitch has to be real perfect. Here comes the 0-2 offering. Went to the breaking ball again. Sharply hit to short. To second for one. To first in time. Four double plays in the ball game. And this Liberty defense is behind you in your college career, Shane. Four? <laughs> Did you four. think you had four? I don't think I even had four. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Cam Troyer stands in now. Bends out of the way of the breaking ball. Hayden LaFew back out for another inning of work for Wake Forest, the big lefty. Troyer lays off that pitch as well. Troyer was hit by a pitch his last time up. That came in the fourth inning, eventually came around to score. That feels like Wake Forest has had so many opportunities to break this game open and just haven't been able to do it. Tough when you have a Liberty defense like we've been seeing today, too. Troyer puts a good swing on that one, and that'll get down in front of the right fielder, Reinish. And Troyer, who's been trying to get things going offensively, struggling here of late, puts a good swing on that one, and Liberty has their leadoff man on. So now let's see you're into the sixth inning. What does Scott Jackson do in these situations? Do you start trying to play for one? Do you... Just let your guys swing away. See what approach they take as we head towards the late innings of this one. McClellan, not showing bunt, takes a strike. Brian McClellan struck out in the second inning, drew a walk in the fourth. A little late on that fastball, finds himself down the count now 0-2. Clellan, the transfer from San Joaquin Delta College. It's been a nice addition. Really good defensively over at first base for the Flames this year. Comes the 0-2 offering. And fastball right by him. So nothing fancy about the approach there from Hayden LaFew. Just reaches back, blows it by him, and Clellan sits down. He's the first out of the inning. And on top of just locating the pitches, that's a great job at holding the runner at first. And there wasn't a single pitch that uh, that we weren't looking to, to manage the runners and, and doing a great job at that. So lefty-lefty matchup now as Braden Horton digs in. Horton, we told you earlier in the ball game, off to a slow start this season. Remember, he hit 341 a year ago, leading the team in batting average. But did show some signs of breaking out against Middle Tennessee. Four for nine in the series, three home runs, two of them on Sunday. Nine RBIs as well, so. Flames perhaps starting to see signs of the Braden Horton that played all of 2023 and hit so well. Gonna have to battle here though, down in the count 0-2. There goes the runner. The pitch out the throw to second, not in time. So the Flames getting out and running a little bit here in this ball game. We saw it in the last inning. We see it here is Camden Troyer able to swipe second base. That's his third stolen base in four attempts. And a great read, too. It was going on first movement and kept his head down and ran a hard 90 the whole way. Went on this wet turf as well. He went into his slide about 60 feet of the way there, didn't he? Seemed like a slip and slide. Slow breaking ball. That one's going to get down in front of the right fielder, Reinish. They're going to wave Troyer on home. The throw to the plate is in time. Reinish threw an absolute strike, and Ballestero was there to apply the tag. The Flames aggressive on the base pads. 
but Reinish could not have walked that one in and put it in a better spot. You talk about momentum, and neither team can grab momentum yep. because there's just so much, you know, game swinging plays and momentum swinging plays. And it's an defensive game. plays. Yeah. I mean, the defense, in a lot of ways, has been the story. So this inning changes drastically as now there are two away. Horton at first base as the Liberty lineup turns over. Leadoff man Kane Kepley at the plate. Rain continuing to fall here in Lynchburg. Kepley has reached twice. He has scored twice. Drew Walk was also hit by a pitch. Lays off that one. Missing away, two and one the count. Rain falling even harder now. And we're gonna get a little visit to the mound. I can tell you, as these two teams gonna kinda mix and match out of the pin the rest of the way. Aiden LaFue back to work here. 2-1 count to Kepley. That one misses in. As LaFue starting to fight his control a little bit. And fighting, I'm sure, just the wet conditions. And you even saw the throw back from the catcher, Ballestero. He almost sailed it high over his pitcher and was kind of shaking, you know, trying to dry off his hand. 3-1 pitch. Kepley skies that one. Williams looking up into that rain, finds it, and locks it up for the third out of the inning. So, Flames had an opportunity to balls for the Flames in this ball game. And now we take you to the seventh in a 3-3 game. Trey Cooper still on the mound for Liberty. Facing Nick Kurtz. Leading off is to take a look at our game recap presented by Carter Bank and Trust. Kurtz on the afternoon, 0 for 1. He's drawn a couple of walks. Trying to draw another one here. And if nothing else, tie ball game. The rain's coming down. We really got to double double down and be confident and, and really make sure that we're taking taking care of the baseball. Well, Trey Cooper just issued a four pitch walk. So Kurtz draws his third free pass of the ball game. He makes his way down to first base. Kurtz already coming in in just 17 games, had 24 walks. So now up to 27 on the season as Trey Carter up and throwing again. He was throwing earlier in the ball game as well, so it shouldn't take him long to get loose. And Cooper really struggling now to find the strike zone. Shane, were you a, I'm trying to remember, were you a guy that pitched multiple innings a lot, or were you more of a one-inning guy out of the bullpen? Because some guys thrive just in that one inning, and then you know it's time to move on. Other guys are better coming out. You know, you get that break, you come out again. Yeah, I, I, in, in my point of view, the way I kind of digested it, it was if if I was hot, I could could get you the three out, or the nine outs, I should say, um, or, or the long save. But either way, it's just you know whatever your numbers call to just throw strikes. And if you throw strikes, it'll everything else will take care of itself. Yeah, but, I mean you do know like some guys, it does seem like, boy, once they get that third out and come off the field, they just going back out a second time. It's not not quite the same. Not saying that's the way it is for Cooper as he. Delivers that one pretty well struck to right field. And Cam Detroyer tracks it down. But I'm sure as a coaching staff, you're always kind of trying to monitor that too and figure out, all right, who is that guy that can handle multiple innings? Who's a guy that, man, if they get you out of the inning, that's probably that's probably say we, we got all we can get out of them. Let's move on. Exactly. And it's almost playing it by ear too, because you know you kind of got to read every situation. If if a guy comes out here, throws you know nine pitches, all for strikes above 92, it's it's hard to take a guy out of the game with command like that and just the will and want to be there. Jake Ryan is up at the plate now. Tell you what, that breaking ball has worked well today for Trey Cooper. He's been able to spot it up pretty well here in this outing. Reinish an RBI single back in the third. As that fastball.
fastball misses down and away. And if you're Scott Jackson, you're looking at kind of how this game might unfold. You're thinking, man, if Trey Cooper can get you through the seventh here, and you've got Trey Carter behind him, he's a guy that you might be able to run out there for the last two innings. That one kicks away from McCadden die, and that will allow Nick Kurtz to advance to second base. So a wild pitch as a Wake Forest runner in scoring position. And with the rain, we're just going to see that every now and then, a wild pitch. It, the ball skips off the turf way quicker with the rain on the ground. So Kurtz takes his lead to second. That fastball, boy, he really got it in on him there. Reinish, you tell, he was expecting something out of the way from him, and it absolutely locked him up. And great command by Cooper today, too, to, to be able to get that fastball as in as he did. 2-2 offering on the way. That misses well outside the zone. Now the count goes full. Kurtz takes his lead off second. Here comes the payoff pitch. Breaking ball misses and another free pass. As Wake Forest has now two base runners with one away. Now, if you're Liberty, you just tell yourself, well, we just put the double play back in order. Yeah, you but know? four, what's, what's four to five? We can just do five. If you can turn four, you can turn five. <laughs> Jack Winnet hoping that's not the case. He has bounced into one of those double plays here this afternoon. 6-4-3 variety back in the third inning. Flames playing him to pull on the infield. And that can make the turn of that double play a little more difficult. In fact, we saw it on Renee's double play, where it was you know, to the shortstop, to the right of the shortstop. And you had Sweat having to run a direction he typically doesn't run when having to turn a double play. He has to angle towards first to get to the bag in time and then kind of get himself turned to make that throw to first base. He handled it flawlessly, but call it round two, unless you you know you have something that happens in round one or, or say the last time that you come up to pitch, what better time to get you your out and kind of get you back on the horse and, and feeling good and having that confidence with you. Carter, fastball slider guy will run the fastball up. 92 to 94 with some sink. 2-0 count, make it 3-0 now to Jack Winnay. So a little bit of a unique situation for a reliever coming in. Really, your margin for error. Microscopic. It's already a 2-0 count. 3-0 pitch misses as well. So ball four, and the bases are loaded with one away. Liberty has been kind of doing the old high wire act in this ball game. A lot of base runners. They've been able to work around it with the four double play balls, but sooner or later, Sooner or later, you feel like Wake Forest is going to cash in on these opportunities. Will this be the time? We heard Coach Walter in his interview earlier in the game say that they're going to find a spot. You know, at some point they'll fall. It, it, maybe it happens. The freshman Javar Williams stands at the plate. If you're Liberty, job number one is making sure Wake Forest makes it happen and you don't hand it to them. Find a way to throw strikes. Force them to earn it. There's a strike right in there. 95 mile an hour fastball. Again, Trey Carter at times electric stuff. Flames just hoping he can control it here today. Three walks here in the seventh. How many times are you able to escape that unscathed? That's what the Flames are trying to do. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hit sharply to short, and it's booted! It was a tailor-made double play ball, and Tanner Marsh just booted it. And the only difference between a couple innings is maybe the speed of the turf, but I'll tell you what, that was a very hard hit ball by the Demon Deacons right there, and, and I think it just got on him just one step, or maybe thought, hey, that's, maybe we got to get this out a little quicker, but I think it just got on him. 
Yeah, and you may be right. I know it's wet turf, it's going to skip a little bit more, but with a guy that runs pretty well in Javar Williams, you're thinking, what kind of ball do we need to roll another double play? That was it. That was the perfect Taylor made, as you said. That was it. So Wake Forest may be making a, a move here. Tate Ballestero was due up. It looks like that's Mitchell Salvino who's grabbed a bat. Salvino on the season, nine at bats, three hits. One of those being a home run. So Salvino stands in on the right side. Wake Forest goes in front, 4-3, an opportunity to stretch that lead a little further here in the seventh. Put some space between themselves and the Flames. Salvino went around there, he evens the count of 1-1. Liberty was that close to another inning ending double play. Fastball misses up and out. Salvino transfer from Washington and Lee. Hit 344 last season. Swings over the top of that sinker. Two and two the count. Drake Carter just trying to limit the damage now. If you can find a way to somehow get out of this, a strikeout here obviously would be huge, but to get out of this just giving up the one run. I feel pretty great about it, but right now he's a pitch away from walking in one. Oh, he's is also a pitch away from the double play again. See, that's, the, that's the positive exactly. pitcher talking in you right yeah. there. Yeah. Yep. Nonetheless, though, I mean, it's, it's a one-pitch game, and that's what makes baseball so fun. Payoff pitch on the way to Salvino. And he got it. Big pitch from Trey Carter, 95-mile-an-hour fastball. And Salvino's down swinging. Yeah, I think that was 95-mile-an-hour two-seam fastball, too. That had a little bit of run yeah. in on the hands. That, that's a great pitch right there by Trey Carter. So a big second out in this inning as now the nine-hole hitter. Cam Nelson stands in there. Max at the first one he sees and fouls it back and out of play. Nelson today, one for three, singled his last time up. Slider there misses down and in. Carter really took something off that one. This has been a steady rain now for about the last, oh, 30 or 40 minutes. You're from the Pacific Northwest, so this is a, just a normal day for you. This is just normal weather for you. It's Oregon sunshine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 310 days out of the year, I would venture to say. It looks just like it does here at Liberty. Well, Carter in a dangerous spot now. Three and one to count. Nine hole hitter. You want to make him have to swing the bat. Here comes a 3 1. That's right. No, no. They say that one missed. Down, I imagine. And that's what. McCadden Dye is asking, I think, at the moment as well. And so a bases loaded walk allows Jake Reinish to come home. And now Wake Forest is stretch that lead to 5 3. And maybe more importantly, the lineup turns over and Merrick Houston stands in there.
So Houston today, three for three. He's also drawn a walk. Down to the count here on two, but you feel like a base knock here. And the Demon Deacons have a chance to really kick the door down. Missing off the outer edge. McCadden Dye trying to frame it up, get the call. And home plate umpire Jeff Francis hearing it from that Liberty dugout after a couple of borderline calls. Now that one gets away from Dye, and the run comes home. Well, that's going to. Get that Liberty dugout, I think, even more fired up. You go from a couple of calls you feel like you maybe should have gotten, could have gotten, and it ends up leading to now one that gets away and another run comes home. And that McCadden and die with no chance to snag that one. And it's hard, you know, as a pitcher, you're thinking, man, you know, where, where am I missing this ball at? Or, you know, whatever the question may, may be. And you try to maybe throw one harder, make it bite. Now that's going to be tough. Deep in the hole for Marsh, no chance. Another run comes home. And now Wake Forest starting to put it on Liberty. Two bigger scenarios. And that's something the Flames are going to have to dial out and iron out moving forward in the season. So Nelson at third, it's Houston at first. That one chopped to Cam Foster. Fields throws across and brings it in to the seventh inning. But not before Wake Forest. It's, it's how they pitch. They pitch with confidence and they attack the hitters. It's, it's a ball club kind of standard they set. Falco, another transfer into this program. He's a grad student that transferred in from Maryland where he spent four seasons. Last season, nine saves for the Terps. He'll face the two, three, four hitters for the Flames. Tanner Marsh 0 for 3 today, and he had ended up being a costly miscue there in the top of the seventh. Could have been an ending, inning ending double play ball. Just unable to handle it at short. And that opened the door for the four run inning for Wake Forest. Freshman shortstop trying to see if he can help the Flames provide a little answer here in the bottom half of the inning. Just got a piece of that one to stay alive. You know, you mentioned earlier about, you know, guys coming in for one inning or, or doing the, the save or the nine out save or the six yeah. out save. I think we're looking at one right now with David Falco with 14 appearances and 14 innings. He's the only guy in this squad with four saves. So I think it's one of those scenarios, hey, if you're rolling good, keep him going. Well, Flames try to not allow that to happen. And Tanner Marsh, a sharp single right back up the middle, his first of the day. Flames get their leadoff man on. Liberty is just four hits. They, they've made the most of their opportunities. They've had actually all three of their runs. One of them came from a guy who walked. Two of them came from guys that were hit by pitches. So they've been able to create offense, even though they haven't generated a lot of it themselves. Get to this stage of the ball game, trailing by four. You're not going to be able to count on Wake Forest kind of allowing you to get back into this one. Flames going to have to swing the bats a little bit and get something going. It's going to be earned for sure. Good speed on it first in Marsh. Aiden Sweat stands in on the right side. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. There goes Marsh. He's running. The throw to second, not in time. By the way, that. That's a new catcher, Cameron Gill. He replaced Ballestero after he was pinch hit for him. Gill, that, I mean, that ball down and away from him. All things considered, that was a pretty darn good throw. He was starting to kind of walk that. Do you see that? That was kind of the, the, the Steph Curry, you let it go, and then you kind of start 
heading the other direction. A little fadeaway yeah, type a little fadeaway thing. action. He thought he had it. That one hit sharply, but right to the shortstop. And Marsh quickly has to dive back to second base to avoid being doubled up. So Sweat retired on the line drive. One away here in the seventh. Brings up McCadden Dye. Flames freshman catcher. Has an RBI today. Checked up, laid off that one out of the zone. Dye, a guy that should still be in high school right now. He left high school a year early to come join the Flames. And Boy, are they glad he did. The injury to three Hillier. Die really the lone guy that has the trust of this staff behind the plate. And labeled as a freshman, but but acting and playing like a senior. I mean, he's the, the leadership and just the working behind the plate. I mean, everything kind of compounding into a veteran of a player. Yeah, they've had to put a lot on his plate here, and this is his freshman campaign in terms of managing the staff. Not only has he done that well, he's hit the ball well enough to continue to move up the lineup. Down in the count here, one and two. Now, I always wonder, you always see hitters go to the wipe the bat off on their jersey. Does that really make a bit of difference? Does a little bit of moisture on the bat, does that really affect? But we all, we all did it. That fastball just misses off the outer edge. It doesn't golf. You know, that little piece of, of, of mud That's on true. a club. So maybe you would think That's you'd true. want a little bit of crazy action off the bat. You right. Know? <laughs> that was probably my best chance. I needed some sort of weird side spin coming off the bat. Dia waits the 2-2. Goes down, hits one to center field, but ranging over to make the grab is Nelson for the second out of the inning. So pretty good swing, but nothing to show for it. And there's two away here in the seventh. So I'll get Todd Hudson to the plate. Hudson delivered a sacrifice fly his last time up. Oh for 2 on the day at the plate. He also was the starting pitcher for the Flames here this afternoon. A guy that can change a game with one swing. The Flames would certainly like to see him do it right about now, trailing by four. Whoa. <laughs> Falco let that one go, and uh, Marsh kind of ducked out of the way at the last second. He about caught that one in the teeth. get into the corner. Marsh rounds third. He'll come in to score. And Hudson checks in at second with a two-out RBI double. So Flames not done just yet. Hudson with a big two-out knock. That's what they call trading places with him. Doing a great job of hitting and pushing a run across the board for the Flames there. In any way we can, just need, need to get runners on base and that's kind of you know rule number one for the flames here in the in the end of the game here so second rbi of the day for hudson now cam foster up there with the runner in scoring position and after a breaking ball came up empty foster singled in his first at bat hitless in his last two the flames trying to kind of chip away and Stay in this ball game here in the late innings. That one catches the corner. Foster, not too sure, has a couple of words for the home plate umpire, Jeff Francis. So 0-2 now to count to the Liberty third baseman. That one knocked down by the catcher, Gill, able to keep it right there at his feet. Palestero struggled at times. 
with balls in the dirt. One two pitch on the way now from Falco. Again, a good job by Gill to keep it in front of him and Foster able to lay off. He's gone from 0-2 to 2-2. Today we've seen more disciplined ABs by the Flames totally and, and completely. It hasn't been, you know, swinging at pitches out of the zone early in the counts. They've had more methodical at-bats, it seems like. Foster trying to find a way to get that runner home from second. But he swings through the off-speed pitch. Down he goes. So Falco surrenders the one run. Swings through that fastball at 88. Dolman, a guy that coming into the season, they kind of thought of in this role, more of a setup guy, get you to the back end of your bullpen, kind of a situational guy that can run out there as that one just misses off the outer edge, three and one to count. I felt like it. Queens last season, they maybe tried to stretch him out too much. As we talked about, some guys better and Short bursts, maybe you use them more often than they, than they are when you use them for multiple innings. And Dolman issues a leadoff walk. Kurtz, his fourth walk of the day. You know, it looked like a couple of those pitches for Dolman maybe slipped out of the hand. You know, the, I hate to keep saying it, but the uh, the rain's going to play a big issue in, in keeping that ball dry. And you, you really got to double down on, on your grip and, and just trust your pitch. Seaver King stands in now. King with a couple of RBIs today as that one just yanked into the ground and that will allow Kurtz to advance to second base. You saw the stat pop up a moment ago. Liberty pitchers 11 walks today. Hard to win that way. And as we get pitching coach Tyler Robinson making his way out of the dugout. In a lot of ways, the Flames very fortunate that they were in this game as long. So Dalman back to work. Facing King. And that pitch misses. 2-0 the count. Seaver King today. A couple of singles. Also bounced into a double play back in the first. Dolman right now really struggling to find the strike zone. You just got to dig deep if you're on the mound and just find that grip and trust it. There is some action behind him already in that Liberty bullpen as there's a fastball in there for a strike. like that's Taylor Grubbs up and throwing and that's this is the challenge Scott Jackson has right now is just finding guys he can trust down there in the bullpen finding some consistency makes it hard to know like all right where do you turn like who's you don't feel like anyone has really a defined role because you don't know what you're going to get from them on any given day yep, and that's what makes it so hard it's just where do you hang your hat where's the constant yeah. in, in what we're doing Not everyone can come out and throw 100% strikes. We understand that too. But at the same time, someone has to limit the bleeding and sure. do it in a, at the drop of a pin. 3-2 pitch on the way to Seaver King. Big bouncer out to shortstop coming in, making it on the big hop. Oh, how about that pick at first base by McClellan? The throw from Marsh ends up kind of short hopping his first baseman, McClellan. The great dig over there to record the out. Clellan has saved his infielders more than a few times this season with plays just like that. 
Yep, and that could have been another one of those free passes of 90 feet, and, and that would have been a another run for the Demon Deacons. It's great play over there on first base. McClellan, a shortstop at the beginning of his collegiate career. Good athlete that shows you that athleticism in his first base position. Infield pulled in right to second base. The throw from Sweat home. They've got the runner hung up. A throw back to third. The tag applied. Meanwhile, Reinish hustling all the way. Makes it all the way to second base. The Flames will take that trade as Aiden Sweat with a good throw to the plate. And they're able to retire Nick Kurtz. Yep, and that's the reason Liberty's playing infield in is, is to limit that run. And it's really good baseball around the around the whole uh, around the whole diamond with the Demon Deacons going for a double and legging it out. So at the end of the day, you still have a guy in scoring position. Yeah, he's not at third base, but it's good baseball all the way around. Take the out if you're going to give it. If, if there's a guy in a rundown, they're giving you basically now. So two away now for Jack Wene. He stands in. Runner out there at second base. Jake Reinish. Flames playing with A to pull on the infield. Three infielders to the third base side of second base. Slow breaking ball in there for a strike. Brandon Dahlman trying to get out of the eighth inning unscathed. After really fighting his control at the beginning of this outing. If you're Liberty, you tell yourself, listen, you get out of here. Still just a three-run game. And you find a way to keep clawing and fighting and stay around in this thing. Give yourself a chance. But it really feels like seven's the number. Wake Forest goes beyond that. It might be lights out. 3-1 count now to an A. And make it 3-2 as he foul tips that one into the mid. An A today. One for three. That was a double back in the second inning. It's also walked and scored. Dahlman comes set, kicks and delivers. Breaking ball missing up and in. Uh, another walk. As that will bring Javar Williams to the plate. And that's going to bring Scott Jackson from my favorites at this point. Is this anybody that he feels like can get out, he's going to put him out there. The two away, Javar Williams at the plate. There's a strike. Williams today, 0 for 3. He also walked back in the second inning. That fastball misses away. It was Williams who back in the seventh came up with the bases loaded. Hit that sharp. Ground ball right at the shortstop. Tanner Marsh just wasn't able to handle it. That extended the inning and ended up leading to a four-run inning for the Demon Deacons. Two and one to count on the Wake Forest freshman. Good swing, line drive right at Aiden Sweat. Can't hit it much else in 37 and a third. They, there's a reason people want to go and pitch for that program. They just turn out absolute studs. And we did the math on that earlier, so that, that shakes out to about two strikeouts per inning and one walk per four innings. Yeah, that's pretty good. It, it's, you'll, you'll take that. It's electric. Cam and Troyer at the plate right now swings through that one down in the count 0 and 2. Liberty trying to find some base runners here in the bottom third of the order. As Troyer lays off that one. Camden has reached base twice today. Hit by a pitch and scored in the fourth. Singled in the sixth and was thrown out at the plate. 
in the sixth inning. On a great throw from Jake Reinish. That one pretty well struck up the middle. They had it played perfectly. Sliding over to his left was Houston to retire Troyer for the first out here in the eighth. We mentioned Wake Forest coming up next for them. They have a home series with North Carolina for Liberty. They dive back into Conference USA play, but stay here at home. They'll play Sam Houston here this weekend. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series because of the Easter holiday. There's the Wake Forest schedule. So North Carolina coming up next. So Liberty will take on Sam Houston here Thursday, Friday, Saturday as they try to win a second straight Conference USA series before. And there's another tough midweek clash as they host Duke a week from today. That one well struck off the bat of McClellan. That gets down. Makes a wide turn at first base and then shuts it down. No reason to take a gamble when you're trailing by three in the eighth. So a one-out single for McClellan, his first hit of the ball game, and the Flames have a base run. I'll tell you what, the, the outfield on both the Deacons and the Liberty Flames today have really shown their arm strength today. Yeah, you're right. We've seen a couple of great throws from each right fielder. We've also seen some these corner outfielders get to balls quickly on, on balls that very well could have been extra bases. They've held guys to a single. So McClellan on at first base. Braden Horton at the plate now. Horton one for three, singled his last time up. He dropped one in in front of the right fielder, Reinish. Lays off that pitch. 2-0. and oh. If you're Liberty and you want to get back into this thing, you're thinking, man, you can find a way to get Horton on, get this lineup to turn over back to Kepley. You give yourself a chance, at least to cut into this three-run deficit. 2-0 pitch on the way to Horton. Fouls it back and out of play. That ball kind of landing over in the area. We talk so much about the pitching lab for Wake Forest, but construction area where Liberty building their own player development facility. They hope to have in place by the beginning of fall next year. Two one count to Horton. McClellan takes his lead over at first base. Gunther comes to the plate. That misses in. If you're Liberty. You would be more than happy to take a walk in this situation if Gunther will uh, give you that opportunity. Here comes a 3-1. Fastball swung through it. 92 miles an hour with that heater. is downstairs so a patient approach by Braden Horton and he works the walk and now here we go tying run coming to the plate in Kane Kepley see now we're, we've seen the rain kind of subside but one thing we've got to watch out for too for the outfielders especially in right field is the sun factor um, it's always going to be coming through the stadium and at this time it's just the luck of the draw it goes right into the right fielders eyes and got to double down on it so Kepley Stands in, 0 for 2. He has reached twice on the walk, and he was hit by a pitch. And he is first pitch hacking here. Pretty good swing, fouled it straight back. In the four games last week, Kepley hit 563. Showed some power in that series over the weekend against Middle Tennessee. 
Another big swing, fouls that one back as well. And now he's gonna have to fight down to the count with two. A couple of big rips up there on those first two offerings. Now, kind of got to shorten up and find a way to get the job done, stay alive. And if there's a guy on the Flames team that can do that, it's, it's Kepley. And to know that, hey, there's still a job to be done with two strikes. Gunther comes to the plate. That one missing up and in. Kepley on the year, 90 at bats, just 15 strikeouts. Chopper, that's going to be a sliding grab. Great job just getting to that one, and it saved a run. As McClellan had to stop at third base, but he had no chance to get Kepley hustling down the line. And now just limit the damage. I think they'd be fine just giving up one in this situation. What they can't allow to happen is the Flames to turn this into a big inning, and all of a sudden Wake Forest is three out, outs away from going home with the midweek loss. So the freshman Tanner Marsh stands in. Marsh singled his last time up. First pitch, Hacken fouls it back and out of play. Marsh one for four on the afternoon. Trying to find a way to cut into this Wake Forest lead. That one misses down and out. The inning started with a ground out to shortstop. Then Brian McClellan singled. Braden Horton walked. Kent Kepley an infield single. Here we are, bases loaded. That one misses down and in. Marsh able to hold up the swing. Big moment for the freshman. That one misses badly. The catcher Gill had to go lunging to snag that one. And now Will Ray, kind of a dicey situation. And if you're Tanner Marsh, you can be ultra picky with what you swing at here on 3-1. You're exactly right. And it missed down and out. A little hesitation from Marsh. He wasn't quite sure, but Ray has walked in a run. So here in the eighth, it's been the Wake Forest pitchers handing out the free passes and Liberty taking advantage. And there's there's no right or wrong way. It's It's any way to get a runner on. There's no pictures in the scorebook, thank God. And, and now we're going to see that, you know, we just need runners and, and just to keep passing that baton. And, and that's one thing that the Flames offensively have done pretty well is, is kind of getting to that next hitter. And next hitter now is Aiden Sweat. Takes a look at a pitch that just misses. And now we get coach emerging from a Wake Forest dugout. I think that's Corey Muscara who's making his way out to have a word with Will Ray. Just trying to kind of ball game. Sweat does not have a hit on the day. Boy, you would kill for one right now. Off speed, misses outside. Although with one out, bases loaded, a free pass is as good as a hit, really, with, with the playbook of I Liberty. Think Liberty would certainly sign up for that right now. Ray trying to find the strike zone. He can't do it. He's missing worse by the pitch. Good job that time by Gill just to stop it. And Aiden Sweat will see one now. He could potentially see two before taking the bat off his shoulder. But nonetheless, a breath of fresh air in that Liberty dugout. Yeah, some energy, certainly. 3-0 pitch from Ray, and he missed. Back-to-back, -back bases loaded walks from Will Ray.
and suddenly the mood in this stadium, certainly the mood in that third base dugout has changed. And you got a lot to think about here. You have Kane Kepley with, you know, tremendous speed at third base. You have one out. It, there's, there's a million things you can do if you're Liberty and, and kind of position A if you're Coach Jackson. Well, right now, with McCadden Dye up there, it's gone from, boy, just chip away, climb back into it, to you're a base knock away from taking the lead in this thing. And now, everybody in that Liberty dugout thinking, we've got a chance to steal this ball game. I don't know how many people were thinking that heading into this inning. Big swing by McCadden Dye. He was trying to turn this game around with one hat. That was almost a five-run home run right there. <laughs> that, was, that was the swing for it. Die had an RBI ground out back in the first inning. 1-1 one, one pitch. Got in on him, fouled it off at the plate. And now you're, you're Die. You kind of go from that, I'm about to just put a dent in one, to what do I need to do to get that tying run home? Yep. Can I get one in the air and find a way to get Kepley home from third. And that's usually how you can attack it. You know, you have the two first two pitches to swing freely, but then you got to get a job done. And he just did get a piece of that to stay alive. One thing coaches have raved about with McCadden Dye this season, his two-strike approach. As he approached this one, one and two the count. Will Ray. Desperately needing an out. Long look in. Ray is finally ready. Comes a one-two pitch. And he got him. Breaking ball just running away from McCadden Dye. He got the swing and a miss. So a huge strikeout for Will Ray. And now there's two away for Todd Hudson. That slider had a little, oh, I should say, a lot of movement to the outer half there, and it's just a great pitch. So Hudson, one for three. A chance to have a huge moment in this ball game. Two outs. His last time up, he was up there with two outs and a runner out there, and he delivered an RBI double. He doubles here and likely clear the bases. Comes a pitch from Ray. That misses. One on one now the count. It's just a quality at bat, you know, and, and not let the game get too big, but just, you know, hand that baton to the next guy. How do you how do you get it to the next guy? That one missing down and in. Ray continues to look down at kind of that landing spot on the mound and kind of kick at the area a little bit. He's not been real pleased, it would appear, with the footing out there. He's going to have to find a way to fight through it. 2-1 pitch coming to Todd Hudson. Hits sharply to first base, but fielded flawlessly and leading things off. It's going to be the catcher, Gill. I'll tell you what, if you've stayed with us for the whole the whole broadcast, we've been on the edge of our seats the whole game, and we've had a, a midweek game with a, a lot of excitement, a lot of great plays, uh, you know, a couple reviews, and, and just a lot of momentum changes here. Boy, you think back to some of that. Yeah, you talked about it. Like, there was the review that overturned uh, what was an out at the plate. Wake Forest runner gunned down at the plate by uh, Camden Troyer. They reviewed it and then overturned it gave Wake Forest a run. Suddenly that feels <laughs> like a big deal. He also had Wake Forest though throw out Camden Troyer at the plate trying to score. Without a perfect throw there, this yeah. game is looking a little bit different. So yeah, there have been some key plays throughout this ball game that have gotten us to this point in a one run game like this. That's what it comes down to. One or two plays here or there. Also been a lot of walks by this Liberty pitching staff. They're trying to avoid that here in the ninth inning. 
Flames pitchers have handed out 12 walks thus far. Four of those walks have come around to score, by the way. Another guy that reached on an error came around to score. So Liberty has certainly helped the Wake Forest cause in some ways here today. That one skied to right field. Cam Troyer ranging over to make the catch, one away. That's also what Wake Forest does, right? So let's like credit them in some ways too. We talked about their ability to be disciplined at the plate, their ability to work a walk. It's it's really part of what makes their offense so dynamic and has has been for the past couple of years. So they don't help you out in these situations. And, and, and to kind of piggyback on that, the pitching staff does not give you those free 90s, or at least does yep. a really good job at limiting those free 90s for the Demon Deacons. Nine-hole hitter Cam Nelson up there now. He ended up walking his last time up. Also singled back in the sixth. That pitch bounced up there. Two and one to count. There is action in that Liberty bullpen behind Grubbs, should that Scott Jackson need to go that direction. Ben Roberts, one of the arms, get loose. Two and two now, the count to Nelson. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth. It'll be the six, seven, eight hitters due up for Liberty. That's Cam Foster, Camden Troyer, Brian McClellan. Should anybody reach, Braden Horton would come to the plate. So bottom half of the lineup. Going to have to do some damage for Liberty. Foul tip into the mitt. Die hangs on to it. And Cam Nelson's retired for the second out. And that's just a great pitch, you know, two seam tailing away. We can see the run on that. I mean, it's six to eight inches of run moving away from a lefty. That, that's a hard pitch to hit. So Merrick Houston comes up with two away. First pitch hacking, fouls it back. He is four for four today. He's also drawn a walk. Flames have not been able to figure out how to retire him. Guy that's missed his last four games due to injury, but come back in a big way here today. 1-1 one, one pitch, pretty good swing. 1-2 and two now to count. Brings it to the plate. Bounce that one in there. Die, good job. Squaring it up. Two and two the count. Grubbs is able to retire Houston here. You'd have to say that's the easily the most effective outing of the day for the Flames. That one sails high. This Ben Blair was pretty good himself. He went two and two thirds innings out of the pen. Did allow the one run. Payoff pitch now on the way. And he struck him out. Now for the Flames. That one misses. Yeah, Cam, did he ever produce on Sunday? Four for five, two home runs, five RBIs. He has the power to leave any ballpark. Wake Forest open to contain him right here, and so far they haven't been able to throw him a strike. This is one of those things that Liberty's done really good is, is just getting that leadoff runner on base today. Yeah. And it's been kind of fruitful for them as we've seen. Foster singled all the way back in the second inning. His one hit on the day. That misses inside. 3-0 and the count. We talked about that leash being short on Will Ray. I think it's about one inning long, or one pitch longer, I should say. Yep. Exactly. He actually just saw Coach Jackson there kind of motion towards the dugout, a, a running motion, so kind of alluding to if Foster gets on, might have a pinch run. 
There's a strike right in there, belt high. Flames have a guy like Nathan Keeter perhaps on the bench that you could see come in as a pinch runner if they need it. Bouncer towards the second baseman, moving to his left. And making the play is Tellier. So Will Ray battles back after a 3-0 count. They're able to throw a couple of strikes and get a huge first out in this inning. So that'll bring Camden Troyer to the plate. See what Liberty's done here in the late innings of this one. Troyer, big swing, no contact. When Wake Forest hung four runs in the top of the seventh, they go up 7-3. You kind of thought, well, that may be it. Maybe it's, it's they're going to kind of stretch this thing out and run away with it. Liberty, to their credit, chipped away and put themselves in the position they're in now where they're one swing away from tying this ball game up. You give yourself a chance against the 12th ranked team in the nation. That's one thing they're doing really good is there's not giving up. It's, it's a different turn and just fighting until the last out is, is recorded. 0-2 pitch on the way right there. Absolutely froze Camden Troyer. I think he must have been looking for something else. And he is punched out looking for a big second out. Now Wake Forest just one out away from closing this thing out. I think it definitely froze him up there. Maybe looking for an off speed or something out of the zone. And, and in reality, will Ray just attack the hitter there? So Brian McClellan now, the only thing standing between Wake Forest and another win. That one just misses. Credit Will Ray. Rocky start to his outing in the eighth. Rocky start to this inning. Missing with three straight pitches to begin the Cam Foster at bat. But he has bounced back and found a way to go after these Liberty hitters. You can tell he's, he's a little frustrated giving up those first two balls it, it, and knowing that you have two outs and you just had that kind of momentum on the last two guys. 2-0 count now to McClellan. Probably taken all the way there, took a strike. Just trying to find a way to extend this ball game. in there. Evens the count at two and two. McClellan he might have thought that was a little up by his based on his reaction. Will Ray one strike away from closing this thing out for the Demon Deacons. And he gets it. Pitch out of the zone. McClellan goes chasing and Will Ray closes it.